So the Tetragrammaton um, effectively is the four lettered name of the Father. And so when you see um, the Lord in the Bible, it's covered over, and it's covering over these four letters, which is Y, H, W, H. And that is a transliteration. So if you've been with us in previous studies, we looked at the difference between transliteration and translation. So translation tells you about the definition of a word. So if you translate a French word to English, you know what the word means. Une chaîne is what, if I know? A dog, thank you. Lot of boss. Oh, did I say it wrong? <laughs> chat. What's a chat then? A cat. A cat. <laughs> you understood what I was saying. <laughs> so anyhow, so translation tells you what it means. <laughs> I haven't done French since at school, so a long time ago. <laughs> and um, transliteration is different. So transliteration is when the language doesn't use our characters. We have A, B, C, D, E, F, G. In French, they also use A, B, C, D, E, F, G. But in Chinese and in Hebrew, and in Russian, they don't use the same characters that we use. So if we're gonna translate it, um, or so, so if you want to learn how to pronounce the word, if you write un chat in French, it's gonna say C-H-A-T. I can understand it because I know C-H is sh and then at is at, right? So un chat is a cat, right? But if I see those same characters in Chinese or Hebrew, I have no idea what those characters are. Therefore, I need to transliterate it make those Chinese character, uh, characters, or these, uh, the, the Hebrew words, for example, make them into English um, characters, the English alphabet. And that's what the uh, YHWH is, it's a transliteration, so that when I see the Chinese for cat, I can read it as, pronounce it correctly as, as cat. So you might also see um, the father's name written like this, YHVH. And that's because in transliteration, you don't have the same rules as you do for a proper word. So transliteration is just to help you pronounce the word right. It doesn't tell you what it means. Yeah, it just tells you how to pronounce it. So, so va is, 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 and, or w is important. So you can see it like that. So when you look at the actual Hebrew words, you see these four letters and they're all the tetragrammaton. So if you were gonna see a Hebrew Bible, where it says Lord, it would, it would say that, um, or Adon, Adonai, which means Lord in Hebrew. So what are the, the, the letters? So remember I said it was Y, and here you've got Yod for the Y, and then you've got the Hey, and it's just like, hey, how you doing over there? <laughs> it's the same way you pronounce it, so that's the H. So when we say Y, Y, if you're gonna write Y in English, it would say W-H-Y. And that's how you pronounce the letter Y. But in Hebrew, you pronounce the letter Y as Yod. And you pronounce the letter H as He. And then the next one, you pronounce this letter as V as Vav. And then you pronounce the He as He. So there you have the Y, H, W, or Y, H, V, H. Yeah, that's the Tetragrammaton. And those are the letters in Hebrew. Yod, hey, vav, hey. Shall we say it together? Yod, hey, vav, hey. Great, because we've got it. But Hebrew is unique. It is, it, and you know what? It's, it's so wonderful because it was given to Adam in the beginning. Like it was lost at the Tower of Babel, um, as we read in Jasher, uh, the book of Jasher. Um, and it was given back to Abraham and uh, or when he was called Abraham and um, and it says that he learnt it and he re relearned it he wrote it down he was practicing in it for what a three I think it was a three month period or a six month period I think the the, the, the book records um, and so it, it is unique it is it's the first language that was given to man and why is it unique it's unique because it has three three overlapping layers Okay, so if you think about layers, it's got three layers and it's conventional. So that's like the words that you just saw on the page, but it's also pictographical and it's also numeric. Chinese has two. They have the conventional and pictographical and Greek has two. 
they have conventional and numeric built into the actual characters of their alphabets. So Hebrew is unique because built into the alphabet is three layers of information. That's really, really important. So when we think about the Tetragrammaton or these letters that we see here on the screen, this is what you would see as a written text. So, you know, if you're typing, typing on your typewriter, um, you would type, if you were typing in Hebrew, you would type those characters. That's what it would look like on a typewriter in a certain font. I think this might be Arial or something, or maybe something else. So, so that's what it looks like. But in the past, you had what you call the Neopaleo. So this is just before the current ones that, that you see in Hebrew. You have a newer ancient neo Paleo, so it's a newer ancient version of the same thing. Y H W H, Yod He, Vav He, and it looked like that. And then you've got this pictographical version. Remember, he said one of the versions is not just numerical, it's not just conventional, but there's also pictographical. And this is a pictographical version of Yod He, Vav He. Yeah? And so you can see here that this is ancient. This is like what you would see written, inscribed on the stone's work, you know? scratched into the stone that archaeologists dig up and they see this kind of funny sort of writing they wrote with pictures isn't it amazing it's wonderful so anyhow let's break it down so it's the, the 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 where are we the first letter the yod yeah here we are the first letter the yod the y okay so when you look at that ezekiel david what does that look like i'll put the words on the on the thing it looks like arm a, that's and right closed hand. arm and a closed hand so that looks like an arm you know it's an arm and a closed hand and so the meaning of that, that letter is that you're going to, you've got a hand or that you're going to work or that you're going to throw something or that you're worshipping. So, so the actual letter itself has meaning. The letter itself has a picture. Do you understand? That's how deep like the father's language is that he gave us. Like unbelievable. And then when you go to hey, well, hey looks like this. Hey, <laughs> you raise your hands. Look, reveal, behold, you know, also breath. You know, if, you, if I were to turn my camera on, if you were to breathe and you say, doing exercises, you raise your hands up and you abduct your hands like that, like, a, like you're like flapping like a bird. And as you raise your hands up, you breathe in and you put them down. <sighs> Come on, let's stretch. We've got a PT here. <laughs> and then and down again. So as you're doing the movement, as you're flexing, you breathe in and then you breathe out. Even if you're doing push-ups, sit-ups, sorry. You, you're said, to, as you're contracting your muscles up to come upwards, you're supposed to breathe in. Is that right? Or breathe out, Vanna, Vanessa? Yeah. You're supposed to breathe out as you're contracting. Is that right? And then breathe back in as you come down. Right, so there's breath with the movement. And the same way when you raise your arm, it's looking like there's movement of your, of your arms, movement of your chest cavity. As you raise your arms up, your chest expands. And you can take a big, deep breath in. So that's important, why? Because remember that breath is also spirit. Ruach in Hebrew means spirit, and it also means breath, moving air. And then we've got the vav, the third one, and that is like a tent peg or a huge nail. And of course, with a nail, you hook things up, you, you add things, you can layer things together with a hook and knock them together, and then you can secure things, yeah? So it's all common sense. Yeah, when you look at the picture, you can work out what the meaning is. You can look at it and say, oh, I think that looks like. Yeah, so it's straightforward to understand. It's child's play, as, as it were. And of course, over time, the, the tent peg starts to look more like a character. Um, you can see at the top there, right there. But of course, when we look in the Bible, some doubted. And we have like this person called Doubting Thomas. Have you heard about Doubting Thomas before? No? Okay, then how about Ezekiel David? You read this. So John 20. Um, what does that say? And what does that say in verse 25? Um, unless I see the nail mark in his hand and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. So I would not believe. So, so, so Thomas, after the, the, the Talmudian, the disciples had said, you know what, the Messiah has risen. Yeah, the Messiah has come up. Thomas is like, I don't believe, like, I can't believe that until I see, like, the nail marks, right, in the person's hand, right, in the Messiah's hand. I ain't going to believe what you're saying. Now, Hashem means the name. And when we look at the name, Yod Heh Vah or YHWH, 
Yeshayahu Isaiah chapter 52 verse 6 says, Ivana? It is I who foretold it. Yes, it is I. So in that day, so the father's name was lost and has been lost for, for centuries. I mean, it's been lost, hidden. And it was hidden by the um, Jewish um, leaders who didn't accept the Messiah, who wanted to form their own religion and said that we don't want to make anyone be able to speak the name of Yah. Um, and so we're going to hide it because in case we blaspheme the name, we're going to hide it from common use. And so sure enough, it was hidden from common use. Um, but he, the, the father promised that in the end time that we would know his name again. Therefore, my people, not the world's people, but his people, his people who are not rejected as priests unto him. Yeah, those people who show themselves approved because they study and they seek understanding. They don't reject knowledge. They don't reject um, opposition to man's teaching or the doctrine of men, as we covered in Shavuot recently. It's all about accepting, throwing out the doctrines and the teaching of men and accepting the teaching that the Holy Spirit can give you as he imparts it to you through your study. And so, so for his people who are called by his name, that's interesting as well. Therefore, in that day, they will know who foretold it. And look at Yeshayahu. Here we have Yesha, and then you have Yahu. All you need is the last character, which is the Hey for Ha, Yahua. You have his name. That's why, therefore, my people are called by my name. So, like Jeremy Yahu, for example, and all the other Yahoos. Um, and we can go into great depth in terms of people's names and knowing who they identified with, who the Israelites were, when we look at slave, um, slave records of the names who they captured in the slave trade. <clears throat> so Hashem or the name means behold the nailed arm of the Messiah that's what his name means so so when you say Yahuwah you are saying behold the nailed arm of the Messiah you're declaring salvation through the blood of the lamb when you call the father's name and instead of calling his name we say the Lord the Lord the Lord uh -uh. let's say his name Yahuwah yeah, because in Hebrew, you're, you're, you're saying that salvation is in the Messiah. And let me say something about this then. Or should I say it later? No, let's say it now. So when we look at this, we have the feature, we have this tent pig. Remember the vav. Yeah, the vav is a tent pig. And look, the vav is nail pierced into the arm. Yeah, and this would penetrate. Look at that where it's penetrating. It will go straight through the median nerve, yeah? It will go straight through flexor tendons, yeah? It will mi miss the radial and the ulnar arteries, yeah? But you can see the median nerve is pointed out there, straight through that. When I inject the, the for carpal tunnel, when the median nerve is compressed in this carpal tunnel, I make sure I go just there. So I miss the artery, I miss the nerve, and, and I can penetrate just by where the little finger is, just um, off center, and I know I'm, I'm missing important structures. In the same way, the Romans, when they would have crucified people, they would have had lots of practice because they crucified them in all manner of way, upside down, hands out in a cross, hands up like you see in, on the standard cross. They would do it on that cross, upside down, you know, all round in a circle. They would just, it was just absolutely horrific, barbaric ways and they would practice how to kill someone in the slowest, most painful way. And trust me, this will be painful. A, a, a huge nail going through your median nerve will crush your median nerve, causing intense pain. And then it will go through all your fixed attendance and it will cause clawing of your hand. So what does the first character, Yod, look like? Is it not the hand with a closed fist? Are you not seeing the connection here, right? So when we say behold the nail pierced hand, we've got the first character, the father's name in a pictographical form is a closed hand, arm, and with a closed hand. That's exactly what would have happened to the Messiah's arm when he was on the cross, when he was crucified. And what was he crucified with? A huge nail, just like a tent peg, right? Driven into it, causing this deformity. And what do we have between those characters 
we have the man with his arms raised up. Behold, look at this. Look at the Messiah. Look at your salvation. Look, look, look. Those are the characters that make up the Father's name. So, in Yeshayahu or Isaiah 52 and verse 10, it says, Yahuwah will do what? What does it say? Yahuwah will lay bare his holy arm in the sight of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth will see the salvation of our Elohim. There you go. So, Yahuwah will lay bare his holy arm yeah, in the sight of all nations. So how many nations know about the crucifixion of the Messiah? Yeah, does not everyone know about it? Whether you believe it or not, you can guarantee every nation knows about this. Yeah? And to the ends of the earth, they will see his salvation. So you know what? As he says, he's going to come back yeah, in the clouds and everyone, that day is not far off. Everyone will see his salvation. But look at the words. Yeah, he will lay bare his arm. Yeah? And through that we have salvation. Hallelujah. His name tells us of his salvation. In Isaiah verse, uh, chapter 53 and verse 5, it says, But he was what? He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities, for our sins. The punishment that brought peace unto us, yeah, on him, and by his wounds, we are healed. 